Hey guys, my name is Amanda, if you don't know, and um, I just wanted to jump on here and talk with you and share kind of my heart with you. Um, I don't do this sort of thing. I don't get on, make videos. This is new for me. Um, but I wanted to just share some things with you guys and just have a conversation and uh, step out of my box and become vulnerable and share some things with you that I'm learning and I'm going through uh, and maybe be able to connect with others who may be feeling or going through some of the same things. So um, even if we're in a different season of life, um, I think this is something that honestly every single person uh, in life goes through and struggles with at one time or another. Um, and so this is my season and I'm sure it's going to come up again uh, another time in my life. But I'm going to be looking down because I have some notes and uh, just some things and thoughts that I wrote out. So what I want to talk with you about today is all about identity and who we are and why that's important and why that matters and how our identity will affect every single thing that we do in life with every single person uh, and relationship that we encounter and kind of how our identity impacts that relationship, how it can help it and how if we have a wrong identity, how it can uh, really harm and hurt relationships. And uh, I believe that relationships are one of the most important things on earth. It is so close to the Lord's heart. You know, he created us to have relationship. He created us to have fellowship and family with one another, um, whether that be, you know, our blood family, our church family, friends, just people we've grown up with. He created us to have community and to have relationships. And probably one reason why this is on my heart right now is because we're going through a pandemic. For the last, you know, over a year, we have been very separated from community and from friends and from family. And I think a lot of us are feeling that desire to connect, that desire to have friendship and relationship. Um, but some of us might be scared to. We might be scared to, to have friendship and have relationship. Um, if you're single like I am, um, maybe you're scared to be in a relationship. Uh, you know, maybe you don't have a lot of friends, you don't have a lot of family because you've been hurt in the past and you said to yourself, I don't want to create these friendships because I'm afraid that I'm going to be hurt again. I'm afraid that um, I'm going to open myself up again and, you know, somebody's going to uh, judge me or not understand me. I'm going to be misunderstood and... I just want to talk about that today from my perspective and share with you some things that I've been learning in my life. Um, so first of all, kind of give you a very short backstory on me. Um, I'm a single mom. I have a beautiful five-year-old son. I've been single for five years now and um, I'm divorced. And uh, I recently just kind of got used to the idea of starting to date again in 2020, uh, right before the pandemic happened. And, you know, being in this age, you're like, okay, well, where do I even start anyways in dating? And now that the pandemic happened, it's like, really, where do I start now? Because everything's shut down. <laughs> there's nowhere to meet people. There's no, you know, there's, there's nowhere to really go to connect. And so um, that's kind of where I was at. And I was also in a place too where I had never dated before in my life. And I didn't, I knew I wanted to do it very healthy 
and in a godly way. And so I'm on this journey of learning what healthy dating and godly dating looks like, intentional dating. Um, and during this time too, I've also really felt the desire for friendships, to build friendship, to build community, um, and to just reach out to people and to connect with people more because I realized when the pandemic happened, everything shut down. I wasn't able to go anywhere. I wasn't able to do anything. And it was almost just this shock. So for a lot of people, their lives completely stopped. And it was going from super busy to like halt. So kids going to school full time, their job full time, um, in ministry full time, uh, you know, traveling, all of these things came to a stop for most people in their life. Well, me, I was one of those rare people that really nothing in my life changed. I was a stay-at-home mom. My son wasn't in school yet. And uh, like full-time stay-at-home mom. And I, you know, I, I went to church, but I, you know, I'm not involved every single week in my church, um, a part of the ministry. Um, I really hadn't um, built a lot of friendships. And so my life didn't really change. Um, I didn't feel this go, go, go and stop. And I think like when that happened and I realized everything in everybody's world stopped and mine stayed the same, it was this realization of like, oh my gosh, this is a problem. <laughs> like I don't have a life. <laughs> and so, um, you know, I'm a mom and that's, that's my life, but that was all, that was my whole life. And that has been my whole life. And, um, it's a beautiful life and it's what I feel like the Lord's called me to, but I also feel like he just, his place is desiring me that there's more, there's more to life. Uh, there's more things that I have for you. There's more things that you can do and that you can be a part of, uh, and my, this season of my life is getting ready to shift. He's five now, so he's about to go into school and things are changing and in my life. And so, um, yeah, it was just this overwhelming desire to have friendship, have community, have people in my life, um, you know, desire to, you know, meet somebody and get married someday where... Uh, for a long time, it, I was just kind of content with where I was at. Um, I had a purpose and I, I was going after what the Lord had for me in my, in my life, but the season was getting ready to shift and change and I was feeling all of that. And so, um, you know, being alone for so long and being comfortable, uh, you know, I you know, have full custody of my son, so I make all the rules, I make all the decisions, I, you know, I'm in charge of our home and um, getting ready to say, okay, I'm ready to maybe meet somebody and, you know, not be the head of my home, meet somebody and let somebody come into my heart, <laughs> come into my son's heart, um, that's very scary and it's very vulnerable and so i do not take that lightly at all i know it's what i want and i know it's where the lord wants me and where he's taking me um but it is scary and even friendships um you know i grew up and i had some close friends that i grew up with that i'm not friends with anymore and we've just had falling out and i realized over the years that that has been so hard, that that has really hurt me. And I have felt this deep seated root of rejection and just this um, fear of, I don't want to get to know you because I'm afraid that once you get to know me, you're gonna reject me. You're not gonna like me. If you see a bad day, you're, you're gonna run. If you see me in you, if you see this side of me, you're, you're going to not want anything to do with me. And, um, 
this this fear of getting getting letting people get to know me and um, so and I think a lot of us go through that because we all have fears we all have insecurities but the truth is is we're not perfect um, I think what's important is that we say okay I'm not perfect but um, we don't just say well this is just who I am I'm always gonna be that way not that attitude but 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 not an attitude of um, you know oh I'm afraid that if they see this side of me they're not gonna like me you know like no we as the body of Christ we're called to love we're called to cover a multitude of sins so that means when we're getting to know somebody having grace and also learning how to have grace on ourselves when we mess up and you know if we hurt somebody you know being able to go and say I'm sorry you know I I'm still learning and I'm sorry I messed up. I still wanna be friends. You know, pushing past that awkwardness because any kind of relationship that you're gonna build, you're gonna have conflict. And um, you know, you can't just have foofy relationships all the time because they mean nothing. Uh, you know, it's good to have community and, and relationship and communication, but um, real communication is there's gonna be some vulnerability. Uh, in that and I think um, for a long time I have been my wall has been up <laughs> like I know I'm good <laughs> you don't need to get to know me <laughs> I want you to like me <laughs> and um, you know that's just not real like that's that's not real and so um, anyways so I just wanted to share some things with you that uh, the Lord has been showing me. So um, if you're single, if you're married, if you're whatever, I don't, I don't care who you are or what you are. Um, I just wanted to share a few things with you that I've been learning. Um, and how the way that I see myself is going to determine how I treat my friends, how I treat my family, how my son sees me, um, you know, the kind of person I am, you know, when I'm out on a date and I'm getting to know somebody. The way that I view myself will come out in how I interact with all of these people in my life. So um, I'm gonna share a couple things with you that I have believed about myself that I would say have been really big in how it has affected me with other people. Uh, so I'm gonna tell you some lies and then I'm gonna tell you the truth. So the first thing I have believed about myself, and this is a lie, the number one thing, I have nothing to offer in a relationship whether it be um, in a, you know, uh, a dating relationship, looking to find a spouse, um, or whether that be in a friendship relationship or any of that, I have felt like, well, I have nothing to offer these people. <laughs> like, who am I? You know, what do I have to give to them? And that is just not the truth. Um, and so, one thing that the Lord shared with me, uh, a verse to counteract that specifically for marriage because I have felt that specifically when I have been desiring to uh, become a wife someday. I've, I've just felt like, uh, you know, I don't have anything to offer a man. Uh, they're not gonna want me. And this is what I feel like the Lord said to me, and this is scripture. So this is why when, when we hear lies in our head, we go to the word of God and we counteract it with, with scripture. We cast down all of those thoughts and high things that come against the knowledge of God. So this is what he says in Gen Genesis 2.18. It says, it is not good that this man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. And in Proverbs 18, 22, it says, Whoso findeth a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. And so 
I had to counteract that lie that said, well, you don't have anything to offer. Well, that's not true because I'm a woman. God created me as a woman and he gave me a desire to be married. And so if he created me as a woman and he gave me the desire to be married, then it says that I have been made to be a man's helper because it's not good for my husband to be alone. Whoever my husband is someday, it's not good for him to be alone. And I have something to give to him. He has created me to be his helper. And it says that my husband is gonna find favor with the Lord because of me. And so it's not about this, oh, well, it's all about me. No, it's just about the fact that I am a, I am a child of God. I'm a woman and I have a desire to be married Therefore, this scripture pertains to me. Therefore, I have something to offer. And so um, that's something I've been able to just speak over myself. Number two, the second lie I have felt is that I am a burden. And um, a, a burden in a sense of um, weakness, in a sense of uh, uh if I've had days where um, I'm not feeling well and I'm physically unable to do something um, and I need help, you know? And so I have felt like, well, I'm a burden because I need somebody to help me do this right now. You know, I can't, I can't take care of this today and I need to ask for help. Uh, and so it has made me feel so uh, worthless and just weak. And, but here's the truth, okay? This is, this is the truth, is that it says, says, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all of the more gladly of my weakness so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, I am content with my weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then he is strong, which means I am strong. That's 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10. And this is the whole point is, okay, so these are two things right now. I have one more after this, but my identity is not found in my strength. And my identity is not found in my weakness. My identity is not found in what I, Amanda, have to offer. Um, number three, lie number three, no one will love me on my bad days. Now, this doesn't mean I say, well, this is just how I am, you know, and you just let yourself fly, you know, you just let it go, you know. This is who I am and I'm just accept me this way. That's not what I'm saying. You know, you recognize and you do what you need to do to grow and to change and to become better, but we are going to have bad days. We are going to have days where we mess up and we have to go to the Lord and the truth is, is that I am absolutely lovable on my bad days. I am absolutely worthy on my bad days, but the enemy is gonna lie to you and he's gonna say, nobody's gonna love that. Nobody's gonna want that. That's, you should hide that. You shouldn't show anybody that. And you know what? It's a process. <laughs> We're all in process. And as long as you recognize it, and you know, you come to a place where you are willing to submit to the Lord to grow in that area, that's what's important. It's not, it's, it's, it's not the end of the world that you mess up or you have a bad day. What's important is that you're willing to see it and you're willing to learn from it and grow from it and to be humble. Um, so the truth that will counteract that lie is there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out all fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in, in love. That's 1 John 4.18, uh, and Proverbs 10.12 says, 
Hatred stirs up conflict and strife, but love covers all offenses. So talking about relationally, okay, like with a spouse, with a boyfriend, with a girlfriend, with whoever, just friend, family, mom, dad, brother, sister, aunt, uncle, anybody. This is anybody, right? Um, if we're afraid that people are going to reject us because we acted wrong or we sinned or we messed up, the truth is, is that if they do reject us based on that, they are not walking in the love of God. And that is not something that you have to take on and put on yourself and say, well, now I'm unlovable because I'm this way. Well, now I'm unworthy because I did this. And because I did this, now people aren't going to love me and people aren't going to accept me and I can't move past this. No, the truth is, is that you go to the father and you ask him to forgive you. And he says he forgives all all of your sins and therefore you do too if somebody else isn't going to forgive you and move past that you have to wipe your hands clean of that you have to walk free because he has already given you the 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 forgiveness and the freedom so that weight of oh like this is always going to be how i am i'm always going to mess up i'm always going to do this no that's not true because love is going to cover that love is going to protect you and people who are walking in the love of Christ, they're going to cover that. And they're going to say, that's okay. I forgive you. Let's move on. You know? And so I just want you to know that we're all going to, we're all going to fail. <laughs> What's important is that you do get back up. And I know that's like so cliche to say that, but it's so true. And that's why we so often we get to a conflict in a relationship and we can't move past it because we are so wrapped up in being offended or being afraid that we're gonna be rejected so therefore we reject, we reject ourselves before we can be rejected. Oh, I'm afraid you're not gonna like this side of me therefore I reject this relationship before you even get to know me. And I think that's why a lot of us, we don't, we don't have deep connections. We don't have deep relationships because we don't want to go. We don't want to go to the deep places with people. We want to only let people know us this deep. And, and it's because our hearts have been hurt. It's because we've been through pain. We've been through rejection and we don't want to go through that again. But the truth is, is that that's how you're going to get to intimacy. That's how you're going to get real connection, real friendship, real growth is by um, going to a deeper place. And I'm not saying that you have to do that with everybody. You have to be wise. You don't just open your heart up to anybody. No, absolutely not. But um, he's called us to have connection, to have friendship. And so, and this is how, you know, if, if we can't, if we don't know who we are and what God says about us and what our worth is, we're going to be constantly trying to see our worth through other people's eyes. And we're going to be comparing. We're going to be um, constantly on the defense. You're trying to defend yourself. If you're constantly feeling like, you're defending yourself, there's probably a root of rejection, of feeling like, well, I'm just not being understood. And if you're constantly feeling misunderstood, then we need to go back and say, okay, who does God say that I am? Because God does not misunderstand me. He knows me deeper and more personally than anybody else does. So I'm just going to quickly wrap this up with some things that just came to me and I wrote these down and this is what I want to speak over you today. And um, this is what I want to speak over myself. And so this is what it says. It says, my identity is not in my strengths or in my abilities. So the things that I can do, 
the things that I can't do. Um, my identity is who Christ is in me, no matter how much or how little I do. So example, um, somebody who's at the church every single week serving, giving, you see them, they're volunteering, all of that stuff, it looks like, man, they are really serving the Lord and they're they are living out their calling. Well, my life, I'm here every single day with my son. Nobody sees me. Nobody knows what I'm doing. Nobody hears my voice, right? But does that mean that what I'm doing is not what God's called me to do? Just because people don't see it? Absolutely not. So if you feel like you're not doing enough for the Lord, maybe go ask the Lord, ask him, okay, is there something that you're actually impressing on my heart to do? Or is this just a season where you're wanting me to take a step back and just do, do this? Because doing stuff for the Lord doesn't mean constantly going, constantly being busy. Sometimes it's just a quiet season. And um, so I do not have more value based on what I can do. I'm always valued. I am always worthy. And I always have a purpose. I am an heir. I am a child of God. We are the bride of Christ. So no matter what my weaknesses or my disabilities are, no matter what my strengths or my talents are, my identity and God's ability to use me is not gonna be hindered or diminished. So you may think, well, you know, example, um, I've had some issues with my back. Okay, that has put me completely, completely, like completely disabled me to where I can't even hardly move for days, days. I'm 27 years old. I have a five year old. I can't be disabled for days. And it has been very discouraging. Um, like, well, I can't even take care of them. I can't even do this. Well, what am I good for? Well, the truth is, is that whether I could never walk again, that does not dictate my purpose. My purpose and my calling in life isn't gonna be determined based on whether I can physically get out of bed or not. My purpose and my calling is the fact that I am his daughter and he has a call and a purpose for my life, no matter what I physically can or cannot do. So don't think that God cannot use you because you don't think that you're capable because believe me you he he has a, a higher purpose and a higher calling for your life than even you understand and so don't allow your own your own disabilities your own weaknesses your own ideas about what things should look like determine on how what god can can do um, a lot of times we want to put him in and it's in a box well you can only use me if i can do this well, this is what I'm good at. And if I can't do that anymore, what am I good for? No, that's not your identity. That's not your purpose. Your purpose is not in your gift. And so he's not limited. He's not limited by our limitations. He's not impressed by our righteousness or by our strength. So no matter what we can do, our gifts, our talents, if we can sing, if we can preach, if we can dance, if we can serve, if we can give, He's not impressed by that at all. That's not what matters to him. What matters to him is a heart surrendered and saying, okay, what, who, who do you say I am? What do you want me to do today? Um, he uses what seems foolish to shame the wise. And he chooses those who appear weak to shame the strong. And that's in 1 Corinthians 1 27. If you feel strong and confident that God is using you, because you're talented or gifted, then I'm gonna say you might have a pride issue because God does not use you solely based on what you think you're good at. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, God can use your gift and your talent, but remember that your gift is not your identity. Um, but that if you lost all of your gifts and all of your talents, you would still be just as useful 
in the kingdom of God because he is your identity and he is your strength and your purpose is much bigger than what you think you have to offer. It's all about him. And that's kind of my notes for today. But I, I want to just say, um, your identity is not based on your personality. Your identity is not based on what you can or cannot do. It's not based on um, if you can walk. It's not based on um, if you have kids. It's not based on if you're married or if you're single. Your identity is based solely in God alone and what he says about you. And so if you ever question, ah, what am I doing? What's, what's happening in my, in my life? I'm, you know, and you're confused, then you need to stop and you need to go back to God's word and you need to read those scriptures on what he says and what he says over you and what he has called you to. Um, yes, he can use all of those things, your gifts, your talents, your strengths, your weaknesses, and he's going to use those things. He's going to use them to draw people to the Lord. He's going to use them to touch people's lives. Um, you know, but I think that's important to know because knowing that who we are in Christ is going to give us that foundation and it's going to give us a confidence that when we go out and we talk to people, we realize like whether I mess up or not, I'm still worthy of being somebody's friend. I'm still like, I, I can be their friend. They have something to offer me. I have something to offer them. And so I just wanted to encourage you guys today that if you're feeling like a place where you're desiring community, you're desiring friendship, you're desiring, um, you know, uh, fellowship with friends and, or even like you're desiring to date again or get out there again, um, you're totally worth it and, and you totally matter. And I don't care <laughs> whether you're seven or you're 77, you have something to offer and you have something to give. And don't think that, well, I've missed my mark. I've missed my chance. We all feel like that. We all go through seasons of that. I'm 27 years old and I still feel like that. I still feel like I don't know what, I, what I'm doing. And so I just want you to know that there's hope today, that you're beautiful, you're precious, and you're worth, you are worth getting to know. And, and, and your worth, your friendship and, and, and your life is worth something. And it's gonna matter to somebody. And so I just wanna encourage you guys today and I love you. And if you wanna to get to know me or you wanna reach out to me, please do. I would love to visit with you. I would love to chat with you and get to know you. So I hope you guys have a good day and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.